back to the villa. Okay, so today we are moving forward to the next step. We need to refine, continue to refine our villa with the next stage of detail. Um, we are today. We're going to focus on all of our different flooring assemblies. Okay, we're going to focus on flooring assemblies, and and if you want to continue with with you know adding things like uh, the kitchen, you can start to add you know uh, some of those other details for those rooms as well. We will actually have an assignment where we will spend the day adding a lot of the entourage, a lot of the furniture, and all the different assemblies uh, for our kitchen and whatnot. But if there are other little details that um, that you maybe think that you are missing. Now is the time to start adding them, but for the most part, we'll focus mostly on the flooring assemblies for the villa. So the first step will be to identify what those flooring assemblies are, okay? Uh, there's a couple ways you can do that. You can reference the example PDFs that we've talked about, okay? If you click on, so for example, here's one. Uh, you can see here that they show probably a majority of them. I can't guarantee their accuracy. I don't know if, if these are exactly correct, but uh, for the actual accuracy, you can always reference our photographs, okay? So here, I think they did a pretty good job um, pointing out what they felt those were. I, I, I do think some of these are actually, in, in fact, wrong, but it gives you an idea of, of what a lot of them should be. So for your final submission, <clears throat> you should show um, as many flooring assemblies that you can at least identify, okay? And I, and I would bet you could probably find pictures of, of every room in this house, okay? So if we go to Google, we can start to uh, look at what some of those might be. So you'll need to start to identify all of the different um, floor assemblies that you can identify in the project. So you might say, um, for example, flooring assembly one, what exactly is that going to be? Let's start with the inside, all right? If we go to the living room here, this is right outside of the patio, which is looking a little dry, they need some new plants. Um, you can see here that we have our first assembly. We'll call that uh, assembly one. And uh, you know what exactly is that? I'm gonna guess it's probably concrete floor. It's probably a concrete slab on both level one and on level two. Um, that's my guess. If somebody actually knows and I'm wrong, just let me know. Um, but more importantly, what is the finish? Okay, regardless of what the actual structural assembly is, let's look at what the actual finish is. Okay, so in this example, it looks like we have really small, kind of tan, ugly uh, little tiles. Maybe they're like six inches or something like that. So our first assembly one is going to be uh, six, we'll just say six inch uh, square tan tiles. Okay, and that's gonna be number one. So then we have number two. What else do we have here in the project? And you'll need to go through and, and you know research a little bit what all the different flooring assemblies is, okay? So this right here is, I think, the kitchen, all right? You can see here that we've got parquet wood floors, all right? So assembly number two might be uh, parquet, no clue how to spell that, wood flooring, okay? So that's another one. All right, and I'm not gonna write them all down, but you, you see the point. Um, we can go up here, here's the patio. Here we have probably 24, maybe 36 inch concrete wood, uh, wood pavers of some sort, okay? So there's another one. You can also go through and you can add the little planters, okay? You can do those using you know little walls or there's probably a couple different ways you could add these planters and you can start to add those little details, okay? Um, what are some other ones? Okay, uh, it looks like this is the kitchen right here. Really a terrible kitchen. It looks like the material in the kitchen is the same as the material in the living room. All right, we got same thing there. I, I'd guess there's probably like four, maybe like four different materials in the house. Here's the bedroom. You can see the bedroom has the parquet wood floors as well. Don't worry about any of the, of the bathroom finishes yet. We'll actually model one of these bathrooms later on. But you get the point here. So I think if you continue to go around here, this right here is gravel. Okay, so you could show that as gravel inside the rendering. There's another flooring uh, on the base level down here. I believe it's a little different. Okay, here it is right here. 
All right, looks like, uh, I think it's the same thing as what we had on level two or level one, but it's actually at a 45 degree angle. They just turned it a little bit. Okay, so those are our different flooring assemblies for this project. So let's start to create a couple of those and figure out how we might go about um, adding all of these different various flooring assemblies to this house, okay? And there's a couple different ways to do that, and I, I wouldn't really say there's one correct way to do it. Uh, I see in my office, we, you know, I, depending on who the designer is, they might do this a different way, okay? And I would say that both the ways that I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you today is probably correct and works just fine. Um, so let's talk about this. Let's open up the project. Everyone right now should have something that looks about like this. All right, we should have a near completed building envelope. Okay, so we have all of our exterior walls, both on on the first level and on the second level, or I guess ground level, first level, and second level. Okay, so we should have all of our exterior walls. We should have all of our windows in. Any openings that you might have, you should have those in. Okay, we should have all of our doors and all of our interior walls. Right now, what we don't have is we don't have any of our vertical circulation. We don't have our stairs. We don't have our ramps. Okay, and we don't have any of our floors. Okay, so your end goal today should be, should be to have all of your different flooring assemblies and to also have your roof assembly. So technically, once you get up here to the top, you could argue that it, it could be a floor or a roof. However you model it is, is really fine because um, technically it kind of functions as both. It, you know, you're going to walk on the top of it, so... Uh, why not be a floor? However you choose to do it is is fine. Okay, so um, you know we're not doing any pitched roofs or any angles like that. So whether it's a floor or a roof, you know you can start to see how it, they start to function the same way. We don't need some of the functionality that a roof gives you. So a floor could probably work. So what are some of the things that we need to think about? So let's start to uh, create one of these floors. So I'm going to go over to first floor here. And I'm gonna start by, so right now I can see a lot of different stuff, but when we, I think when we add the floor, we'll, we'll actually um, fix that. So I'm gonna click on floor and finish floor six inch concrete. So there's two ways that I've modeled this in the past. One is either by creating a overall floor structure. So I would actually just, for example, six inch concrete floor or eight inch concrete floor, whatever you, you know, eight inches is actually probably pretty thick, but let's say I start out with an eight inch concrete floor. I'm gonna bring it all the way from one side to the other, okay? Like so. And I'm gonna click first floor, that looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and click the uh, check button. Would I like all the walls in the bottom to attach to the bottom of this floor? Yes, I actually do want to do that. Okay, and if I look at this in 3D, Okay, you can see here that we now have our concrete floor. That looks good. But what we don't have is we don't have all of our finishes. Okay, and I don't know why they didn't do that, but all of these walls should actually be uh, attached. This is really weird. I've never seen a lot of my layout like this. But you can start to, you wanna make sure that you attach all of your bottom walls to your bottom floor. Okay, I'm not gonna do all these right in front of you, I'll do a couple. Okay, but you wanna select those. If they didn't attach, technically when I hit yes before, they should have all attached. Not sure why I didn't do that, but um, let's continue to add some of these different details. So one way you could do it is you could actually create an individual flooring assembly for each of the different pieces, okay? So as you start to draw that, you could do something like this you could create a flooring assembly that says like six inch concrete, and then you could add your, whatever your finish is on the top of that, okay? And you can start to kind of piecemeal all of that together. So you might have flooring assembly one over here, you might have flooring assembly two over here, then you have your patio over here, and you have your kitchen and your living space right there, okay? So technically, you could break it all down into all of the different pieces, okay? And uh, you know what, what this line right here might be would be like the center of the, of the wall of all your interior spaces. So you don't, you don't actually want to see that joint anywhere. Um, but technically in section and the plan, it's all going to look exactly the same. So that's one way that you could do it. The other way 
that I see a lot of people actually doing is, um, and I do this myself, is you might start by doing what we just did. You'd create the actual overall floor assembly, which is like six inches of concrete, okay, or eight inches of concrete, whatever it might be. And then from there, you would create individual flooring assemblies for each of the finishes that you want. And so, for example, you might do floor assembly one, and that's just gonna be our tile. So we would just, uh, instead of creating like a finish on top of the actual core, you would just say the core is the finish, okay? And you would just say the core is just a half inch thick, or whatever the thickness of that material is, wood, it might be a quarter inch, half inch, three quarter inch, whatever it might be. And you're gonna say that this assembly is just a half inch, uh, parquet wood floor. And you would actually start to add it basically exactly how they would add it in construction. They would add it per room, okay? So they would go in and they would say, okay, all right, we have a, we have a demise or an interior wall here, we have an interior wall here, an interior wall here. And they would go in with your half inch wood floor and you would select the ins inside face of that wall and go all the way around that particular space and hit check. And then you would have, that would basically sit right on top of your finished floor. So that's how they would typically do it. I mean, in most, you know, if you're building a house and your finished floor elevation is zero, zero, well, the top of that plywood that is on top of like the wood joist would be zero, zero. Or if it's concrete, the top of that concrete would be zero, zero. And then from there, they would go in and add all of their finishes on top of that. And your finished floor height would just be like a quarter inch. And if you have like a quarter inch and a half inch, you would just have some kind of a threshold between them that would help uh, join those two areas. So those are the two different ways that you could do it. So you might argue another way. How do you, I want to create an actual pattern on the floor. Okay. Okay, so let's, let's, let's do that. Let's actually create a couple of these different uh, assemblies. Okay, so right now I have attached let me just take 30 seconds here and attach these are gonna these are gonna bug me attach some of these flooring assemblies to my my floor great question yeah let's go through and let's create a couple of those okay just give me about a few seconds let's get some of these Attach. Okay, I just want to kind of clear out some of the areas for my where I know I'm going to be modeling. Okay, so I'm going to go over to my first floor plan, and right now we have this, and let's let's attach that too. All right, and we want to start to add specific finishes for, for this space. So we know that I think it's this area right here is gonna be our six inch wood or our six inch tiles, okay? And I think some of the bedrooms have a couple other different finishes, but let's create uh, our first finish. We've already added our main structure. So I'm gonna go over to a uh, floor, okay? And I maybe have already created Let's just create a new one, okay? I think I've already created it, but let's create it again. So let's do duplicate, and I'm gonna say uh, finish floor, living room, kitchen, just be nice and descriptive, six inch tan tiles, okay? So I'm gonna hit okay, all right? And so from here, I'm gonna go to edit type, and I'm gonna adjust the thickness of this to, we'll just say a quarter inch. Okay, that's, we'll say that's the thickness of all of our tiles. So now I need to create a custom material for these spaces. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on this material. I'm gonna create a new material and let's give this a nice name too. So we'll say living room tiles. Okay, maybe it's living room slash kitchen tiles. All right, and there's our new, where'd it go? And there's our new material, okay? So what are some of the things, based off of what we've learned in the past, that we need to do to start to give this some actual materiality? Appearance. Appearance. So we're gonna to go to appearance, and the first step would be we need to find an actual image that we want to use for this tile. 
Now Revit may already have that. Okay, Revit may already have that. We can look, but you also may have to go find your own. Let's just see what Revit has. Okay, so I don't, of course it's probably not gonna take us to the right spot. So let's find one that already does. Let's find a grass, that one will. Okay, so let's click on that link. It's my good little shortcut. Such a good shortcut. Uh, what do we call it? We call it living room. Okay, so there it is. So let's go through and let's see if we can find the one that we actually want. Now it's actually interesting. There is a parquet floor in here, just so you know. So if you look hard enough, there I know there's a parquet floor in here. Let's find. What is it under? I think it might under be. Let's try finishes. Okay, here we go. So that's a bump. We don't want one that says bump. There's a dark gray. So we're getting closer. Actually, this is probably pretty close. In fact, we all know that Revit loves the Cabousier. So there's all kinds of Cabousier stuff inside Revit. So I wouldn't be surprised if most of the finishes that we need for this villa are probably in here. Okay. So here we have uh, finishes, flooring, tile, square, tan. That's good. Finishes, I don't know what the difference is between the two of those are. Maybe there's duplicates. Maybe somebody accidentally duplicated the library in here or something. It looks like there's a duplicate of all of them. So let's just click on one of those. We'll click on one right there. And we also have tile, square, tan, bump. Do we all remember what the bump is? Why would we add a bump? We want to make it look realistic. Right, we want to give it some depth. What it does, it just it adds a kind of a depth texture to that material. So we're gonna add our flooring, tile orange, Okay, what would be the next thing that we want to do to make sure this is correct? Okay, bump. Let's add the bump. So let's check that and let's go through, let's go down to finishes. All right, there it is. Tan, square, tile, bump. That's the right one. Okay. All right, so how much, depending on how much texture you want to actually have, you can adjust that as you need. So what would be the next step to make sure that we want this to be six inch tile? What would we what would we need to do to make sure that it appears correct? Right, we're gonna double click on this image. We're gonna make sure that the scale is correct. So right now what size tiles do we have? Three inch. Three inch tiles. So we need to adjust this to be two feet. So it's one foot right now we want it to be double the size scale. Let's change this to two feet, okay? That looks good. Now, there's another part of the villa, I think at the bottom when you walk through the double doors where the tile is very similar to this, but it's actually at a 45 degree angle. So that here, you could also rotate that. You can give it a 45 degree rotation should you be doing those. Okay, so I'm gonna hit done. Now I believe you actually need to do the same thing to the bump. Yep, you do. You wanna make sure that the image map is the same size in both the bump and on the actual texture. Okay, so now we have the correct tile. All right, it's such ugly tile, it's unfortunate. But now we know we at least have the correct tile. The size, the scale is all accurate, that's good. So what's another thing that we need to do to make sure that this looks correct? Scale. We've already done that, we just did that. You mentioned it earlier, is you want to create a custom texture. So the last thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that when looking at this in hidden line view, we want to make sure that the tile is correct as well. So we need to make sure that we have what? Surface pattern, right. So if we're looking at this in hidden line and we know that we don't want to show our floor plans in realistic, okay? Um, if you want to do maybe like for the final project, maybe show a realistic and a hidden line, that's okay. But don't just do hidden line because it just gets really colorful and, and kind of hard to read. So we want to make sure that we add a surface pattern. So we need to make sure that we have the correct surface pattern that corresponds with our six inch tile. Okay, so I'm going to click on surface pattern and uh, someone remind me the difference between drafting and model views. In model you actually see it or vice versa. In model we what? You actually see it <coughs> in the model. Well, uh, Kind of. I, I think you're getting to the right. I think you're trying to say the right thing, but we can describe it a little bit better. Uh, kind of. Okay. So the difference between drafting and model uh, textures or or patterns is that drafting patterns 
will fluctuate in each of your floor plans depending on the scale, okay? So whereas a model pattern is actually defined. So you could change your scale to eighth inch, quarter inch, whatever, but those tiles or that texture will always be what it, what it is that you've defined. So it'll always remain a 12 inch tile or three inch parallel lines. Whereas drafting patterns, um, depending on, so let's just say you have a drafting pattern and you're using it in a detail view. You've done, you're doing a little, a little call out of maybe like a floor assembly. Well, you want that pattern of that concrete to be the right scale. You don't want this teeny tiny little fine pattern. You want it to actually fluctuate in scale based off of the scale of the drawing. So if you're doing a little detail drawing that's like three to one or six to one or something like that, you want a nice big pattern. So it will fluctuate accordingly. So for what we're doing today, what do we need? Which pattern type do we need? Which one? No. Model. Because we want to be able to select an actual tile size. Okay, we want six inch tiles. We don't want 12 inch. We don't want four inch. We don't want eight inch. Let's see, do we have a six inch tile in here? I'm kind of hoping that we actually don't so that we can, eight inch tile. So we actually don't have a six inch tile, which is actually a good thing. Let's look at how we can create our own pattern. Okay, so we're gonna go up to new and we're gonna create our, new, our own pattern. We're gonna type in six inch square tile. Okay, and we're gonna go over to, we're gonna change it from parallel lines to cross hatch. We want a cross hatch, but we don't want a 45 degree angle. If we were doing the downstairs tile, we would want a 45 degree angle. So you could see here where you're gonna probably likely need to create a couple different patterns. Okay, and you're gonna need to create a couple different custom materials. So we're gonna change that to zero and hit enter. All right, let's just look at this. So six inch square tile. Oh. Something that we didn't do. We didn't adjust the actual spacing. Let's make sure that the spacing, darn it, moving too quick. Let's make sure that that's uh, six inches on both sides. So we have zero line angle, six inch spacing, six inch spacing, cross hatch, that looks good. Now, if you wanted to actually import your own hatching, you would click on custom and then you could, you could import your own hatch pattern. So, uh, there's various hatch patterns already installed on the computer. You can actually go out and find your own too. A lot of manufacturers will give you hatch patterns. Like if you're doing like a custom stone on the side of your building, well, I want to go to mcnearbrick.com and I'm going to download the actual pattern so that in my elevations, it actually is correct. Okay, so that's an option as well. So I'm going to hit okay. And I'm going to hit okay again. And now we have a six inch square tile pattern. And that looks good. I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and hit okay and hit okay again. And now we have that particular material. So if I want to add my quarter inch tile on top of my concrete floor, what would I change my height offset to? Minus a quarter inch. Up a quarter inch? Up a quarter inch. We want it to be a quarter inch above our finished floor height. Okay, so 0.25 inches. All right, and then from here, I can go ahead and add add it to the inside face of my wall. All right, you can also use your pick lines tool. No need to go in every little, in, I mean, we're just gonna go ahead and pick the overall boundary of, of where we know this is gonna be. Some might argue, well, you're not putting tile on the inside of the, of the wall, but you're not gonna see it. It's not, it's, uh, yeah, it's, not, it's not a big deal. All right, so from here, that looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the check mark. All right, and now notice that we have a nice six inch tile pattern in that space, in both of those spaces. I'm actually missing all of my doors up here, but uh, you can see here that we've now added that, you know, all of those different, or that, that flooring assembly. So you would do the same process for all of your different areas, okay? So you do the same thing for you know, out here in the plaza, you would add your six inch or your two or three foot concrete pavers. I'd bet you could probably find concrete pavers inside the Revit archive as well. All right, and so that looks good in plan. And if we go over and we do a view, let's set up a quick little camera view inside of our space. All right, it looks good right there as well. All right, and if we turn on realistic, 
it looks the way that we want it to also look, okay? And you can also do a rendering and it'd probably look even better, okay? And so if you go back and we look at this picture, you know, you might argue that, okay, these tiles are a lot, they're a lot lighter, okay? Now what's something that you might do to maybe try to adjust this a little bit? Yeah, you could add a tint to it, that's one way, absolutely. You could add a tint. So these are all some things that you might have to do to you know, kind of dial this in just a little bit. You might also do an image fade. So maybe we fade the actual image like 25%. Uh, yeah, okay, let's just try that. And then I'm gonna go and add a tint. It did lighten it up a little bit. It's not quite so orangey. All right, let's add a tint to it. Edit type, let's see if a tint will do it. So I'm gonna go over to tint and maybe we add, let's add like a white tint so that it lightens it up. Okay, okay, okay. Now it still looks pretty orange. I'm not gonna be super critical about these. It depends on who's working on this. I could see you probably really wanting to dial it in and getting it just right. Okay. Um, when you render it though, when you render it, it might also change a little bit. The rendered view versus realistic view might be, uh, might be different. Let's just check that out. Yeah, this may not be the actual right one. I'm guessing it's probably, it, it may not be. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's, but it's definitely a different color rendered than it is in realistic view, so something to think about. So, and if you really want to fine tune it, you can go and find some of your own materials. So you can always Google them. You could say um, square tile pattern, okay, image. Uh, what's the word I like to add? Seamless tan tile. Seamless, yeah, you just kind of have to add a couple descriptors so that you can get the tile that you want. That one's pretty close. That might be even be closer than what we had. Okay, so that's another option as well. I'm not gonna go through with that, but you could go and download it, upload it into your project, and you could use that finish as well. Okay, so you'll need to go through today, add all of your different flooring patterns. So let's take some time and understand what all of those are, download the images that you need to download and start to add all of those um, all of those different patterns all right so if we go up to my 3d view eventually here we're going to have a pattern here we'll have a pattern here we'll have par i think parquet wood floors in the in the i think all the bedrooms get parquet wood floors and a few of the other spaces so just make sure you do the the correct research so that you know what each of those are okay and then you'll add one you'll add another floor up on the roof Okay, and eventually it's going to look, let's see if I can just back up enough to where I had what I had when I started. Okay, something kind of like that, but the only thing is right here, I just don't have all of the different, you can see here that I have some tiles in there, but for the most part, this is about what you should have by the end of, or by the next class, minus more detail. So you'll need to go through and add all of your different uh, floor patterns, okay? And I will actually, I actually wanna continue to update this myself so it's a little bit more uh, closer to where I want it to be, okay? But that's it. So it's 12.04, all right, let's go to lunch. And let's come back, we'll take, we'll take our typical 40, 45 minute lunch. Let's come back at 1245, okay? And we'll spend the remaining you know, hour and a half, two hours uh, moving forward on this project. Okay, and if you have any questions, let me know as soon as we get back and I'll help you address all of those different items.